They call this place Weirdo Beach. I don't know. It ain't that weird to me. <laughs> All right, give me a characterization of your childhood. I was the total opposite of what I am right now. I was quiet, withdrawn, I read a lot, I wrote poetry. At what point in your early life were you introduced to this quote-unquote thug mentality? When I was out there by myself, with nowhere to stay and no money. Which city? Bits of it was in Baltimore. Pieces of it was in uh, Marin City, and then the rest came in Oakland. And what was your first introduction? Drug dealers, uh, pimps, prostitutes. That's really it. Criminals. They just, they the only people that cared about me at that point. When I had nowhere to go, and I was hungry. But you said your mother hungry. always cared about you. She did, but she was lost at that particular moment. She wasn't caring about herself at that moment. And what was that like to have a mother who was addicted to crack? I love my mom. She the bomb to me, so I, I know love she all is her now, mistakes. But what about then? It was hard. It was hard because, you know, she was my hero. And what did you do when you stopped going to school? I only had two jobs ever in my life. One was in Round Table Pizza. I used to make the pizza, but it was good. It was the perfect job to have it because I was hungry and I got to like eat all the toppings off people's pizza. That's why, I, hey, because that the, all, everything is right there. Could you imagine I was making pizzas on the side, <laughs> <laughs> bringing pizzas home? I'm calling in my own deliveries. Hello. I'm saying this. We on Venice Beach. That's what you're supposed to do. I've been in jail for 11 months, Savage. So you got to let me get a look on something. <laughs> Do you think it's important to tell your fans that it's not cool to end up in jail? I don't have any problem telling people it's not cool to go to jail because I've been there and it's not cool. He's out on bail pending his appeal. Since his release, he's rarely left the studio where he's recording tracks for his upcoming double album. Please, you got to keep your head up. Hey, don't film this though, man. This private man so just tell me how you've been feeling with all the stuff that's been going on the last couple of weeks good relieved um happy to be home it's a trip when you when you know that last week you were in jail and i was in this little cell and it's real dirty and i didn't have any hot water and dudes are telling me when to shower and when to eat and all of that and then the next the next week i'm up in monty's with uh champagne and Filet mignon and lobster and did, shrimps. Did you ever feel like your life was threatened in jail? By the guards, not by the inmates. But they just did everything they could do to try to break me. Because I used to talk a lot of, you know, coming out of jail. No, not you. I know, I know. It's hard to believe, Tabitha, but you just got to picture it. But, um, you know, they would say things, because they would call you. I, jail was the first place and I can go, and they just went. Well, as soon as I got there, they went, there he goes. And he goes, who? And he goes, there's the rich nigga. I was like, oh, shit. He said, nigga. He said, nigga. And everybody's looking at me like, so? And I was like, oh my God, this is where I'm gonna be staying? He just said, nigga. Well, you've got niggas in one of your records. Niggas. He's talking about niggas. Niggas was the ones on the rope hanging out the thing. Niggas <laughs> is the ones with gold ropes hanging out at clubs. Well, maybe not everyone's aware of the differentiation. They don't have to be. Everyone, if you're not a nigga and you don't use you that word, don't you don't have to understand. Word. It's just not one of those things. How did you meet the girl involved in the alleged rape? I met her in a club. Some guys introduced me to her. Sorry. <laughs> I met her in a club. Some guys introduced me to her. And she was very forward with you? Extremely. And what happened? She did some things. And Sexual we things? We got together, yeah. She did some things there at the club, and we got together later that night. I saw her again another time with these guys that introduced me to her. Um, everybody was having a good time, not doing anything sexual, they just having a good time. I went and let me and her went in there. She gave a massage, came out, went to sleep, woke up. She's screaming, rape, rape. I raped her. And the next thing I know, I'm going to jail. So in your opinion, there was no truth to the sexual abuse charges? Not on my part at all. If you could go back to the night when the sexual abuse occurred, is there anything that you would do differently? Yeah. What? I would not have um, closed my eyes until she was out of the room, until everybody was out of the room. I've grown up with tons of wild stories from lots of legendary rock bands and things that they did with their groupies. Do you feel like there's a double standard for 
black artists and white artists and how they entertain their groupies? Yes, it is a double standard because it, America's scared of a black man's sexuality. And they only see us as brutes who can only go, hammer girl. They just can't imagine us being any other way. And that's why it was so easy for people to believe that I could do this. It seemed like there was a time, though, that you were definitely reveling in the image of sort of being wild and crazy. And what got you off that path? Five hot bullets. Well, tell me what happened at the recording studios in Times Square. I got shot five times. I walked in, some dudes walked in and shot me up, um, took some jewelry. Do you know who shot you? No. Is that a no or is that a maybe? No, I don't know no. who shot me. So does that mean that you also have no idea why they shot you? No, I have no idea why they shot me. Do you think that they shot you just to get your jewelry? I don't know. It's like anybody's guess. I don't know. I don't really like to talk about it. At any point, did you think that you were going to die after being shot five times? No. No, I didn't. Immediately, I was like, God, man, I know how it's going to be. When I die, it's gonna be no no noise, you're gonna hear people screaming. I'm gonna fade out. You were on trial for sex abuse charges at the time of the shooting. I was on trial for rape and sodomy and guns possessions and forcible kidnapping, 50 bottles, 18 charges. That's why I wanted to die at that point. Cause I was like, you know, I mean, I'm tired. But I lived and I was like, well, you know, I can't check out. So you felt suicidal? Oh, definitely. It wasn't like I was one day waking up wanting to commit suicide. Just all around felt suicidal. But I couldn't kill myself. I just wanted somebody to kill me for me. You know what I mean? Um, Yet you were still happy you survived the five gunshot wounds. The only reason I was happy was because I didn't want them to take me out. You know, I want honor, man. I want suckers that want to rob you, taking you out. You know what I mean? That's cowardly. Do you feel rehabilitated? That's what they try to do in jail. No, jail is not a rehabilitation thing. I feel like I've grown and matured. I don't think jail had anything to do with it, though. Tell me what you've been recording in the studio since you got out of jail. Okay. The Euthanasia is the name of the album. It's a double album. I'm going to release it for Christmas. It's going to have Snoop on it. Me and him did a song called Two of America's Most Wanted. Did that it's one. Apropos. Yes. So you were telling me earlier about Two of America's Most Wanted. Can you play me a little? Oh, yes. This is with Snoop, right? Yep, yep, yep. This is me and Snoop. Two of America's Most Wanted. Stop me. I never stop me. Mother how long did it take you to record that? Was it just one day in the one studio? One day in the studio. That was one of two other songs I did that day. Do you feel like rappers should be more responsible for their lyrics? Um... Yes. What would you define as irresponsible? You talk about murder and death, you, talk, and you don't talk about the pain. Or you talk about killing and robbing and stealing, you don't talk about jail and death and betrayal and all the things that go with it. A lot of people would characterize your music as gangster rap. Do you? No. Why not? Warren Brando's not a gangster actor. He's an actor. Axl Rose and them are not gangster rock and rollers. They're rock and rollers, right? So, I'm a rapper. This is what I do. I'm an artist. Well, what's on this dad that you can play us? This one's called Life Goes On. It's like talking about all the deaths that we have. Now you just got to get over it. How many brothers fell victim to the streets? Rest in peace, young nigga. Where's the heaven for you? I'll be alive if I told you that I never thought of that. My nigga, you're the last one to drink. Cause I fell through the empty halls. Breath sticking in my jaws. Ring, ring, ring. Quiet, y'all. Here come and call. Plus, it's my homie from high school. We get by. Does anything that Bob Dole says make any sense to you as far as rap is concerned? No, nah, I don't have no disrespect towards Bob Dole. I know he don't know what he's talking about. He's just talking. Some, some card that somebody gave him, he's just reading off that card. But he's cute, you know what I mean? He's my grandfather. One of the characterizations made of rappers often is that they're very boastful. It seems like right now you're taking pains to be humble and look at things from a very realistic perspective. Is that yeah. accurate? Mm -hmm. I think being humble is sexy. That's, a, that's my new put. I'm pushing so humble. You're, be, you're being humble I'm, to I'm, get checked? I'm trying to turn you on, Tabitha, as a matter of fact. I'm hoping my humble thing is going to get to you. <laughs>
So you got married in prison. Yes. What happened with that? It didn't work. Not because of her or me or jail. It just wasn't the right thing to do at the time. I married her for the wrong reasons. What were the reasons? I cared about her, but I married her because I was in jail. I was alone, and I didn't want to be alone. And How would you compare how you're handling fame and fortune in 1995 to how you did a couple of years ago? I believe I'm more responsible, more mature, and more focused. And I will be more focused and even more responsible and even more mature in time. It seemed like the two sides of Tupac were constantly battling with each other. One minute you're spitting at TV cameras, the next you're talking about Shakespeare. Have you reconciled those two? Um, hopefully. I like to think so. I think that I'm really, I was a reactionary. And now I don't do that anymore. Same person, 